it is the hour of truth. And some of you that are watching for the first time, or maybe seeing me for the first time, I'm uh, teaching on Fusion World. Fusion World is um, you know, one of the current uh, um, communication system that is in our age, that is growing very fast. Okay? So, the purpose of here is for the war on the truth. The program is called the Hour of Truth. And that is what is the truth? Jesus said the Bible, the word of God is the truth. Amen. This morning I'll be dealing with running with God's purpose. Running with God's purpose. Uh, if you can bear with me that there are a lot of running around in the world today, people are running around, going from one area to the other. Amen. Without knowing where they are running to. And uh, if you can remember one of the songs about Mali from Caribbean here, song, Rat Race. There are a lot of people running on Rat Race and don't know where they are running to. Uh, but God has I'm not called me and you as his children to run Rat Race. God has a plan for us. So I'm dealing with running God's purpose. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's read from there. Running with God's purpose. 1 Corinthians 9.24 I read from the word of God. I love the word of God. It says, Know ye that not all that which run in a race run all, but one receive any prize. Oh, let me read it again. Know ye not that they which run in a race Run up, but one receive any price. So run that ye may obtain. Run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temporary in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat any head. But I keep under my body and break it into subjection, at least that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. Very interesting word. Paul was writing to the Corinthians here. He said, No, you know that everyone run a race, but one receives the prize. We can see that in sports in this summertime. You see, there are different kinds of sports going on. But at the end, only one person or only one group will receive the trophy. Why? Because they won. They run correct. They run correct. The same thing in the race of the kingdom. There are many running, but they are running out of God's purpose. I love what Paul said here. He said, I but I keep my body and bring it into subjection, which means he disciplined himself. So that, not after he might have preached to other people, his own race will be in vain. I won't lie to you, there are a lot of people preaching this gospel, but it will be a surprising thing to us on the last day. Because many of us, either we are doing it outside the will of God. You can be doing some nice things, but not the purpose of God. That is possible. You can be doing some good things, but totally outside the will of God. Amen? And that is what Paul is saying. He said, I discipline myself that after I might have preached to other people, I will not be a castaway. Amen. My question to you this morning, the race you are running in the kingdom of God, is it God's will? Is it God that asks you to do what you are doing today? If you can just stop for a moment and ask yourself this question, am I running the race God has set for my life or am I running my own? Because to be frank and to see, every one of us, God has a plan for us. God has a purpose for us. I want to show you this in Isaiah. That God has a plan for you. He has already finished everything concerning your life. That is the purpose of this book. Amen. Everything is finished. And this book is a road map. Plus his voice. That when he speaks, 
You can be able to go to this place and confirm it, just like a manner of life. That is why you see a lot of people today without Christ, with a lot of money, but at the end, you find out that all the time they spent on earth was just a waste because they never enter into the will of God for one moment. Because everybody outside Christ is totally outside the will of God. And at times we envy them because we don't know the truth. Let's go to the book of Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46 from verse 9 to 10. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure and my purpose. You that are watching now or will watch this later I want to assure you that God has a plan for you. God has already finished your life. And it is time for you to ask him because he knows it even before you were born. I put on here that it is possible for people to live for you or for a person to live amen, all his life and never enter into the purpose of God. I'm not talking about unbelievers now because every unbeliever, whatever race they are running now, is totally outside the will of God. But I'm talking about believers. That it is possible for a believer to run all his life in the church, all his life in the kingdom of God, outside the purpose of God for him. Have you asked yourself this question? What I'm doing now? Is it God that asked me to do it or something else is behind me? Is it myself that is behind me that is motivating me to do what I'm doing now? Is it to gain popularity before the folks on earth today that makes you to do what you are doing right now? Is it materialism to accumulate materialism? Is that the purpose? Is that why you are doing what you are doing right now? Ask yourself that question. Are you envying someone? Maybe because you see people doing things in the kingdom. I told it to our church person. I said, look, Jesus spoke to me face to face in the dream, the purpose of this church. And I am not going left or right. I am focused on that purpose. He said, because he has spoken to me and he reminded me, keep your focus on the purpose. For the purpose of this house is to raise up men with truth who will prove the kingdom, prove the word of God. And will be an example in the society and win their society back into the kingdom of God. Why? Because when people see them proving the word of God, they will know that there is God. My question to you right now is this. Are you running this race in the kingdom because of what you see other people doing and you decide to do it? Is that your purpose? Or for you to be accepted by people? You know, a lot of people, they do things so that others can accept them. Is it God that asks you to do it? Amen? Are you glad in doing what you are doing now? Because one of the things, one of the signs of running the purpose of God is that the joy of the Lord will be. I'm not talking about happiness. Happiness happens because of things you see this But joy takes place inside that you know that the Lord is faithful. And no matter what happens, you are running this purpose. And he will never forsake you. I put out here that fulfilling God's purpose brings joy. Meaning into our lives. Bring joy. It causes life to have meaning. Why does it bring joy? You look at yourself. All you are doing here is not going to end in this world. But there is eternal record before the creator that what he has assigned you to do on earth, that you have done it. How will you feel today if you come before the throne of God, if you die, and God will say, all I've asked you to do, you didn't do it. You were 
keep resting. You were in the church, but everything I asked you to do, you have not stepped into any of them. Or, how would you feel if you come back home to me? Because every one of us, we are going to die one day. Nobody's going to escape that. Death has been swallowed up. So when you are dying, it's not something that, it's unbelievable that when they die, people start to cry and start to, oh, when we die, we go, we face the creator. How will you feel when you come before him and he says, well done, faithful servant, you have done all I ask you to do. Well done, my daughter. All I ask you to do, you have done it. Jesus said it. He said, I have finished your work, glorify you on it. Paul said the same thing. I have finished my race, my crown is waiting for me. Why? Because they knew they were running the race that God placed before them. Amen? Joy comes. Life has a meaning when you know you are doing the will of God. It makes you look around and say, yes, I am glad I did not run in vain. You see, there are a lot of people today doing things, but they are not happy about what they are doing. They are not joyful. They are not glad. I always ask such people, they're glad in doing the things of God. If you are not joyful, if you are not glad in what you are doing, consider if that is the will of God for you. Because fulfilling the purpose of God and groaning or murmuring does not make life meaningful to you or to me. Amen? A man or a woman who runs the purpose of God, who wants the purpose of God, Looks around and says, Father, I thank you for what I am seeing around you. I thank you for the fruit. I do that many times. Times I want to give up, but when I look at the fruit, I say, God, I am grateful. I said yes to you. And to me, it confirms what Jeremiah said. Let's go to Jeremiah 29. That the thought of God towards us is not a thought of evil. God doesn't commission us to do what we hurt us. No, he doesn't do that. He's not a wicked God. Look at what he said in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For well, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Whatever you are doing today, I will encourage you to stop and ask yourself, why am I not glad in doing this to them? Is it really from God? Majority of people in the church don't know the purpose of God for their life. I've come across so many Christians. You ask them, they will tell you, Pastor, I don't know the purpose of God. I'm just doing it because I like to do it. You can like to do something, but that is not the purpose of God. What I'm doing today, I don't like to do it, but I, it gives me joy to do it. Because that was not what I liked. I told them recently, I said, what I loved so much when I became a Christian was to be a very powerful businessman. That I would generate money and support the kingdom of God and support those who are preaching the gospel. That's what I told them. But I love this. I, I hate to see the church poor. So my desire was, God, bless me. Let me obey your word. Make me to be a very strong businessman that I can be an investor in the kingdom of God. But God said, no, that is not what I called to do. The day God told me I was to be a pastor, I said, you know, I cannot. It's just like what Jeremiah said. And that's all it is. I find other times. I ask myself question. There are people that like to do this. And I said, is it really the will of God for them? Because most of the people that you see that God called to do things, the will of God, the purpose of God is not so easy. If you read the Bible, you see a lot of people that God gave an assignment. They said, no, I cannot. And that confirmed that is the purpose of God because what you can do, he can do you. God will never call you to do what you can because otherwise it is no longer by faith. But he will call you to do what he can do through you. And you say, Lord, I cannot be saying that is all I need from you. You gotta depend on me. You gotta trust me that through you I can fulfill my purpose. And that's exactly what I told him that already. He says, Son, I know you cannot, but I can through you. All I need from you is yes, Lord. And I said, Yes, Lord. 
Running with God's purpose simplifies your life and makes things easy. You see, a lot of people, they run their own race. They run the race that's set by them. They run it under pressure. They run it under stress. God will not call you to do his purpose under stress. One of the ways we know that you are in the purpose of God is that it makes things, I'm not saying everything will be easy, but it makes things, it simplifies things for you. Because one, you are no more cracking your head to figure out what you are going to do. You have a road map in your hand where you are going. It makes things easier. It makes life easier. Why? There is a road map, like I said, that directs your activities. You are not the one that initiated that purpose. He initiated it. But because you know, just like what Jesus said, I do what I see my father does. You become a copy. God put the original before him and says, son, daughter, this is it. You see, it is different between two people that are on a journey. One on a journey where they don't know. One with a road map and the other with a road map. The one with a road map will quickly know where there are junctions, where there are roundabout directions to go, where to get whatever he needs or she needs. Or the one with a road map will be beating left, right, center. Is it here? Is it there? And that is what we see today in the kingdom of God. That people, they are running without knowing where they are going. I've come here to let you know that when you are running the purpose of God, you don't run it to please anybody. You don't run it to please yourself. One cent, one, one person that is focused in your life will be God to fulfill and to please Him. Amen. As you enter into the purpose of God, these are some of the signs. There will be peace. Amen. Let's go to the book of Isaiah 26. Peace. If you are in a place today and there is no peace, ask yourself, is it the purpose of God? God. I want to know. God wants to show us his purpose. He wants to reveal his purpose to us. There should be peace when you are in his purpose. Isaiah 26. Verse 3 says, there is, there is, there is much wind here. We are in Caribbean. It is a season of wind, so don't mind the mind of flying. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Thou will give him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Remember what I told you before. That every purpose of God must be fulfilled through faith, which is trust. And make what is his purpose, and you trust him. One thing you will experience in your life is peace. The second thing you will experience is focus. If it take you away from beating, oh, I want to be in America. Like for example, before I came here, I had so much in my mind. I want to be in Nigeria. I want to be in America. I want to be here. Today I'm here. I want to be here in my mind to them. But until Jesus appeared to me that faithful day, and I thank God for that, I said yes. He said, I want you to go to this place. He didn't speak to me, his voice, his face to face in the dream. And he took me and said, this is the place I want you to be. And I thanked God and I said, yes. Because from that very day to today, one thing has happened to me. I'm focused. Let's go to the book.